can they survive the winter time. They'll even tolerate the scanty food supply among the steep rocks just to spend some time in the sun. It can often take until afternoon for these alpine ibex to warm up and get their stiff joints supple again. Only then do their spirits return too. By this time, other animals have long been busy finding their breakfast. The fox needs around 20 mice a day to survive, but in winter, it's not that easy to catch them. Its sharp sense of hearing reveals even the quietest mouse. By fine-tuning its hearing, it can locate a mouse to the millimeter. Next comes the mouse jump, a miracle of precision and accuracy. Nothing can save the mouse now. Apart from a frustratingly hard snow crust, but the fox isn't about to throw in the towel that easily. This mouse and 19 of its brethren won't have much of a chance today. A thousand meters higher up, another act unfolds in the drama of life. Now in December and January, it's the rutting season. By a special kind of sniffing known as the flamen response, the ibex males can smell which goat will soon be ready to mate, or which one is already estrus. Ranking fights that take place in winter are mostly playful skirmishes the animals have to conserve valuable energy, so the males only push each other around a bit. They already know which of them is strongest and therefore allowed to mate. They established that back in summer when they were all well fed. But these two apparently have more issues to sort out between themselves. The fight even continues the next morning. A blow just one sixtieth of the force of these would fracture a human skull. But ibex skulls are made up of movable plates with a cartilaginous buffering substance between them that cushions the blows. Posing bucks aren't the only ones that indulge in skirmishes. Sometimes the females fight as well. Are these also ranking fights? Or just bad tempered female spats, humans would call catfights? No one knows, but they certainly look serious. Loser is chased away, humiliated.
In winter, the world might appear empty, lifeless and lonely. There are very few animals about. They're mostly hiding from the cold or have dug themselves in underground. The only birds to be seen are the ones that usually stay behind, birds of prey like the eagle. The migrating birds have all gone, fleeing not only from the cold, but also from hunger. There's not much nourishment about for insectivores in this icy world. The only survivors here are survival experts and those who have help. In a hard winter with permafrost, freezing rain or a closed blanket of snow, bird feeders help songbirds survive. Domestic birds, such as tits, would probably survive without food, despite the harsh conditions. Anyone standing around in the snow for too long gets frozen feet. The tits are no exception. The feeding of songbirds is a controversial issue. In many cases, it supports species that are already very common. And some bird feeders become infested with germs, spreading deadly diseases. The nuthatch wedges its food in tree bark cracks. That way it can crack things open. In summer, insects. In winter, seeds and nuts. This squirrel is doing well. It lives in a coniferous forest where it can find food all year round. So it can be quite lazy during summer, unlike its relatives that live in deciduous forests that have to lay down supplies of food. The red crossbill has the perfect survival tool. Nature has shaped its beak like crossed spruce seed pincers the red crossbill's life is closely intertwined with the spruce. In years where the trees carry few seeds, the birds migrate away. In intensive fruiting years, forests can experience actual crossbill invasions. So the crossbill is a sporadic migrant. One third of Switzerland is covered in forest. That's around half a billion trees, which works out to around 60 trees per Swiss citizen. Forests are so important to the Swiss that they have a unique law. Whatever was once forest may never be cleared because forest equals protection. Protection against avalanches, landslides, and floods. The forests prevent damage worth four billion Swiss francs every year. Twenty-five thousand species of animals depend on forests. Switzerland's largest wild animal is also a forest dweller. As soon as the 